I open this one first? Yes, you can. Go on. I think I know what it is. Oh, it's really heavy. Must be a rock. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, thank you. It's wonderful. Good choice. Well done. Is there anything to go with it? I don't be so ungrateful. <laughs> Under the bed. Thank you. Open mine. It's pencils. If you don't like them, I'll have them. Come on, we can help. Oh, thank you. Come on, let's get it going. Let's see how it works. child exploded. <laughs> Is there no hope? Hope? Oh, yes. A little bit of solder. New valve, perhaps? Yes, we'll have this going again in next to no time. You can all help. Can girls help men dead in boots? They can do anything boys can do, can't they, Daddy? Yes, of course they can. Two gentlemen to see you, sir. I've shown them into the library. Remind me to install a moat and a drawbridge, would you? So that nobody can disturb us. <laughs> the twins soon saw that he could run the faster, so they climbed the spreading chestnut tree. The baker, his face the colour of raspberries, stood at the foot of the tree and wondered where the insolent twins had gone. A conker dropped on his head out of the tree, whereupon his face turned from raspberry to the darkest beetroot. I wish we did have a moat and drawbridge. Please, um, the master would like you to step into the study. I think he's had bad news. My guess is it's a death in the family or the bank busted. Or... That will do, Ruth. You can go. I'm afraid father's been called away. But why Darling, not? go to bed. Mummy, it wasn't bad news, was it? I can't tell you anything tonight, my pet. To bed, now. Why has Mother gone to town? Ask me no questions, I'll tell you no lies. You'll know soon enough. Peter, you mustn't ask. Why not? Mother will tell us everything we need to know. Goody, goody. 
Bobby's right and you're a twit. Oh, don't. I'm sure there's been some calamity. Let's not make things worse by being horrid to each other. I know from what I hear from the others that he is in this house at this very blessed minute. And if... My darlings, I want to tell you something. The men that came last night did bring very bad news. And Father will be away for some time. But I promise you won't ask me or anyone else about this trouble. It's about business. And you know how hard business is to understand, don't you? Is it something to do with Daddy's work for the government? Yes. Now, it's time for bed. Don't you worry, my darlings. It will all come right in the end. I've asked Aunt Emma to come and stay. I can hear somebody's shoes dragging on the ground. I know what you're doing, Peter. Dentata variegata. Charles II. 1660 to 1685. Edward IV. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure it really matters. Of course it does. 1461 to 1483. Thank you. Come to a bad end, you horrible little child. If you don't bend your ways, you'll go to where your precious father's gone. Now, my little loves, everything is settled. We're going to leave this house and go and live in the country. I know you'll love it. Is Aunt Emma coming with us? No, it'll just be us. We're only taking a few things from here. Just the useful ones. Why? Because we've got to play at being poor for a bit. I know things shouldn't matter, but well, you get used to them, don't you? Well, why do they have to take that? You know what Mother says. Well, I think a rocking horse would be very useful. Why is it? There, there's another one coming up. I like 
like movie house. We should do it every month. Do you mind if we don't? With you. Come on. Let's catch them up, okay? All right. <laughs> There's the house. I wonder where Mrs. Viney is. Who? The woman I employed to clean the place and leave supper for us. gone home. Your train was that late. So, what are we expected to do now? Yes, well, it's it's a tricky one. <laughs> we can uh, we can use the key under the doormat. That's what we do around here. Nobody ever gets broken into it, unless they deserve it. Cases. What's that? It'll be rats. You're unlucky, it'll be big rats. Right, well, I'll bid you good night. Good night. to be cheerful. Nobody can be cheerful in the dark except owls and bats. <laughs> I wish Father was here. He'd get that packing case open just like that. What are you kicking me for, Bobby? I wasn't. <clears throat> it's very cold for this time of year. Stop trying to be so grown up. Peter. Well, you've often wanted something to happen, and now it has. I'm sure there aren't really any rats. No. 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 Wake 
the cart. What's the matter? There are no servants or anything. We have to do everything ourselves. I don't know how to do anything. Shh. Must let Mummy sleep. Mummy's going to write stories and try to sell them. We could help by buying some. Oh, no. <laughs> and we must make sure she isn't interrupted when she's upstairs writing. Yes, except to bring her tea. Or stroke her hair. I might want to. What if Mummy doesn't sell any stories? Perhaps Daddy can still get money. I don't think so. We wouldn't have needed to sell off the nice furniture. I think it's good that we sold it. More room to run around now. <laughs> <laughs> A train! You do. <laughs> you didn't get chewed to death by rats last night, then? No. Mother says it's probably just one mouse. Ah. Bachelor, is he? Lives alone. <laughs> just ignore me. Half of everything I say is more or less complete nonsense. The trick is trying to guess which half. Oh. Mrs. Ransom, off somewhere nice or to your sister's? The carriage was dusty last time. Oh, was it? Oh, I'm sorry. Although, I have to say, 
The chief cause of dust on the trains is actually dusty passengers. Oh, um, thank you for carrying our things last night. Oh, heavens, there's no need to thank me. It's my job. We've come from London. Oh, London. How is London these days? We had to sell some of our furniture. Oh. What was wrong with it? Don't listen. She just, um, says things. Excuse me. You getting on the train? Nope. We're stuck here for the time being. Well, go and sit somewhere, if you be so kind. You're impeding free movement. wondering if we could light a fire. No, loves. Coal is so dear. If you're cold, dress up more warmly. I hate being cold. I hate being able to only have jam or butter at tea time. Don't go on, Phil. I mean, you're supposed to have them together. It's like steak and kidney. I'm going on a lone adventure. What? I can't tell you what it is, because it may be wrong and I don't want to drag you into it. Can I be the damsel in distress next time? I'm always a savage. Damsel? Damsel's a type of plum. Oh, Peter, don't do it if it's wrong or we should all do it together. No, you can't come. It's a lone adventure. To the Marines. Come along to the station. No, no, not the police station. You and that boy from Three Chimneys, aren't you? Is there anyone else in your gang? No, honestly, I promise. It's only us. Oh. Right. Look at you. So nicely dressed and all. Haven't you been to church? Don't you know it's wrong to steal? I didn't think it was stealing. I only took it from the middle of the heap so it counts as mining. It'll take you thousands of years to burn up all that coal. Not quite. Poorer folks scrimp and save for coal. You lot can afford it. But you think it's yours by right. No. At our other house, we always used to have fires when it was cold. Now Mother says we're too poor to have a fire now. Peter, don't. <clears throat> they, they actually had to sell all the furniture. Thank you for your contribution, Mr. Perks. Highly welcome. Well, perhaps I was a bit 
than ours. But remember, stealing is stealing whatever you do it. I know we're looking this time. Now, get along home. Thank you. Thank you. You're a darling. That's all right. Peter. Don't speak to me. You're spies and traitors. I'm not even sure, actually, that mining is a crime. The Green Dragon's three and a quarter minutes late. I wish it could take our love to Father. I wonder why he doesn't write to us. Mm. I really miss him. Me too. I'm afraid he'll forget about us. He won't, Phil. He's probably terribly busy. That's why it's called being away on busyness. Is that true? Let's all wave at the green dragon as it goes by. It might understand if we take our love to him in London. Yes, why not? might meet the station master. I'm not scared of the station master. Tell that to the marines. <laughs> At last, a sensible editor who's taken my story. Oh, well done, mother. <laughs> well, we could do with the money, and that's the truth. Oh, let's buy a big something. <laughs> Does this mean we can afford to go back to London? No. Better than that, we can celebrate with buns for tea. Good morning. Good morning. Excuse me. I'd rather you weren't polite to me. Beg your pardon? I think you're being polite to me because you don't remember that it was me who took the coal. And it was. I'm sorry. Oh, don't you worry about that. Let bygones be bygones. What you got there? Buns. Oh, I thought you were all so poor. Mother sold the story. We're going to have buns every time she sells a poem or a story. Oh, poems and stories, is it? Well, you ought to be proud to have such a clever mother. Yes. Although we preferred it when she didn't have to be clever and she could play with us. Well, you should look into the station whenever you fancy it. Yes, we might well do that. Thank you. It's actually the sign for the emergency cord in the train. Stop it dead off. Two pounds, ten shillings fine for improper use. Well, what counts as proper use? You know, being murdered, more or less. Mm. You know, there was this old woman once, and somebody kidded her on that the emergency cord was actually a refreshment room bell. So she got up, 
she pulled the cord, the train stopped, the guard rushed in and she said, oh, there you are, I'll have a glass of stout and a pork pie, please. <laughs> Why do all the trains have numbers on front? That's so as we'll know which one's which. I actually knew a young gent once that took down all the numbers of all the trains he ever saw and he wrote them in a notebook. Why did he do that? Nobody knows. So the old lady pulled the little handle thing and said to the train driver, or the guard, or whoever the man was, oh, I've missed out a bit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was very funny. I've been meaning to ask you, when you go down to the station, you won't walk on the line, will you? Well, didn't you ever walk on the railway lines when you were little? Yes. Very well, then. But be careful. Imagine how I'd feel if you got hurt. You know how much I love you all. How long can you remember someone you really love? Even if you're desperate to, if you don't see them or hear their voice. Forever, my love. Forever. Oh. What's going to happen to us? Your mother has influenza. I'm sure she'll be all right, but we're going to have to look after her carefully. You look rather solemn. I think you should be head nurse. Yes. I'll send down some medicine. Keep up a good fire. Have some strong beef tea made for when her fever goes down. She can have grapes now and beef essence, soda water and milk and a bottle of the best brandy. I'll write it down. I can't afford all this rubbish. But Mother, you need all these things. Ask Mrs. Viney to boil up a scrag end of mutton for your supper tomorrow night. I'll have the broth. Chilling on mother's brandy and beef tea. How are we going to buy all the other things? I don't know. Well, we've got to get mother better.
I'm so sorry to disturb you on your train. We feel we know you a little from waving so often. <laughs> Please, take this. Thank you, my dear. Dear Mr. We do not know your name. Mother is ill and the doctor says to give her the things at the end of this letter. But she says we can't afford it and to get mutton for us and she will have the broth. We do not know anybody here but you because father is away and we do not know the address. Father will pay you. Or if he has lost all his money or anything, Peter will pay you when he is a man. Gentlemen asked me to fetch this up right away. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Clark. Oh, I've carried a few hampers in my time. Especially during the hamper season. The worst thing I remember to carry was a fish tank with the water still in it. If anybody ever asks you to carry a fish tank with the water still in it, just say to them, say, well, you can say anything you like because nobody's listening. I'm very sorry, but I don't have tuppence to give you like Father does. Just drop that right now, young man. I just wanted to say I was sorry to hear your mother wasn't working. And to bring her some, some sweet bread, because it smells so nice. I'm not looking for any tuppences. I beg your pardon. Right, well... No offence. Thomas from Kitty Winks, indeed. Dear Roberta and Phyllis and Peter, here are the things you want. Your mother will want to know where they came from. Two chickens! <laughs> tell her they were sent by a friend who heard she was ill. When she is well again, you must tell her about it, of course. Eeyore de Cologne. Or de Cologne, silly. It's for dabbing on in places you think you're going to be kissed. Are strangers to give us things, is that clear? It's not right to go telling everyone about our affairs. Why? There are lots of bills coming in, you said. I know there's a doctor. I know, we're poor, but we've got enough to live on. Now, I'm going to write to your old gentleman, thanking him, but telling him I don't approve of what you did. I still think we were right to ask, because otherwise... No, Peter. There are some things that people like us just don't do, no matter what. Now, we won't talk about it anymore. Because it can strike at any moment, illness. That's the frightening thing. One minute you're standing up, the next minute you're lying down. Mrs Spiney? From standing up to lying down in as little as a minute, another doctor. He'll be expensive. I should know. I've been under him several times. Very warm hands. Oh, you throw it all wonkily. You do it then. I can't bat and bowl. Oh! I won 
to brother! So, <laughs> nobody's ill. No. Good. Makes a change. I get a lot of illness. <laughs> blurt it all out, then. What's the trouble? It's rather hard to just blurt it out because of what Mother said. What did Mother say? That I wasn't to go telling everyone we were poor. But you're not everyone, are you? Not at all. Well, <clears throat> I know from Mrs. Viney that doctors are expensive. And you're a good doctor, so you must be very expensive. You might think so, mightn't you? So, so I asked her how she could afford you, because I know she's much poorer than we are. I've been in her house. Ah. She said her doctoring only cost her tuppence a week because she belonged to a club. And I don't want Mother to be anxious, and I thought I'd ask you, can we be in the club too? You're not cross with me, are you? You're probably not very wealthy either. How could I be cross? <laughs> You're very sensible. I'll make it all right with your mother. <coughs> now, don't you worry, or you'll make yourself ill. Then, I'll have to send you a bill as long as that railway line. Shall we wave at the people in the boat? Like we wave at the old gentleman? The problem is, we'd wave and we'd still all be there, watching each other. You really think you'll catch something? Yes. yes. You haven't even got a hook, Phil. Well, I don't want to hurt the fish. <laughs> Come on, we should go and meet Mother off the train. Hello, excuse me. What's the time? I mean, I dropped my watch in the water butt and it doesn't... Mind your own business. Posh bloody kids. Stuck up. Ow! Hey! Why did you say that? That's horrible. We're just normal children. We're not posh. I've repaired this dress a hundred times. And even if we were posh, we still care about you and not despise you just because you were poorer than us. Right. Next time, they'll be sorry. Perhaps we should stick to the railway. Please. You. Kids. Can you see Mother yet? Kids. No. It's not her train. Something's happening. Now oh, then, step aside. I'll attend to this if you please. Well, what's the trouble? You have to pay for your billet. No. You have to pay for your billet. Nope, don't understand a word. Mother knows languages. She'll be on the next train from Maybridge. This way? If you please. Well, he's got no tickets and no visible means of support. I'm not sure I shouldn't send for the police. No! 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 Are you Welsh? Look, we 
We'll show him these foreign stamps and he can tell us if he recognises his country. Norwegian. That's a nice one. No, no, he's not Norwegian. He'd be wearing one of them thick jumpers if he was Norwegian. Смотрите, вот, русская. Я родом оттуда. Это моя родина. Oh, he's Russian. Mais je parle français aussi. Um, you can stay at our house. Vous êtes très gentil. Spasiba. Oh, yes. Bon voyage. <laughs> He's worn out, body and soul. He should go straight to bed and must be kept warm. Thank you. Stratsvoita. <laughs> that means hello in Russian. Perhaps goodbye. He might need to join your club. He's got nothing. I saw him crying. Please don't. You wouldn't smile if you'd seen him. I've never seen a man cry before. I'm sorry. I must find you some clothes. Why hasn't Father taken his clothes? Daddy isn't... He isn't dead, is he? Oh, darling Bobby. No, no, of course not. Daddy is quite, quite well when I heard from him last. And he'll come back to us someday. About the Russian man. He's a writer. He wrote about how to make conditions better for the poor in his country. The Tsar sent him away to a cruel and harsh prison for life. How did he get away? He escaped. He heard that his wife and family had fled and come to this country. Does he know where? No. He has to find them. My love, when you say your prayers, Ask God to take pity on all prisoners and captives. Prisoners and captives? But if you have your cake, of course you can eat it. Yes, but the point is, once you've had it, you can't eat it again. I know. So it should be. You can't eat your cake and still have it. Unless you only eat half. I hate Mr Shapansky having to wear Daddy's clothes. Yes, so does Mother. I can see it in her eyes. What's that noise? Look at that tree over there. It's moving. It's magic. I don't like it anymore. Let's go home. That'll take some clearing up. It's right across the line. The 11.29 down hasn't gone by yet. We must let them know at the station or there'll be a terrible accident. Run! Wait! Come back! There's no time! 
should wave at the train to stop it. That just think it's us waving as we usually do. We need something red. Let's take them off. If we can't stop the train, there'll be a real accident where people smashed up and killed. Sticks! We need sticks to put the flags on! Sleep. Yes, thank you. Like a log. Um, I, um, this blackberry. Thank you. Be better. Thank you. Listen, we got a letter! When a small presentation will be made to you on behalf of the Great Northern and Southern Railway. In commemoration of your prompt and courageous action in warning the train. That's about... Averting what must, humanly speaking, have been a terrible accident. Does this mean we get a present? Not that it's important. And so today we pay tribute to Roberta, Peter and Phyllis for displaying great bravery and presence of mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Make a speech and thank everyone. Begin, ladies and gentlemen. Nice and loud now, you can't be too loud. Ladies and gentlemen! Too loud. This is awfully good of you. We don't deserve the watches, because what we did wasn't anything, really. It's just... I mean, it was terribly exciting. <laughs> so thank you all very, very, very much. We meet properly at last. Yes. <laughs> As a director of the railway, permit me to say, bravo. Thank you. Do you think it terribly rude if I, if I have a favour to ask? Excuse me, sir. Um, photographs? Of course. Afternoon tea. Hey, handsome. Oh, well, this is very thoughtful of you. I had an accident with a lemonade. A cup and a plate might be nice. Perx always drinks it out of the can. Yes. Um. Well, I, in a minute I want to hear all about you, but what was that favour you wanted? Um. Do you know anything about 
about Russia? Russia? Anybody want to know the time? No, no. thank you. 3.18. This is a bit like the Victoria Cross, really, isn't it? When I'm very old, I shall show it to my grandchildren. You have to be married to have grandchildren. I suppose I'll have to get married someday. I'd like to marry a lady who had trances and only woke up once or twice a year. When I get married, I want him to be awake all the time to tell me how nice I am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Parks. Don't mention it. Always a pleasure to carry a director of the railway, <laughs> if that doesn't sound too oily. No, no, no. Most, most gracious. <laughs> Good news. You found Mr. Zapatsky's wife and children. And I couldn't resist the pleasure of coming to tell him myself. Oh. Well, on, on, on second thought, you, you run ahead and tell him. These two will look after me. Thank you. Well, I must say, I think everything has worked out very well, hasn't it? Come on, Perky, you Have must you come too. Don't call me Perky. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, it's all right. You want to know. This is another one of the letters that I wrote. I... We know where your wife and children are. Oh. Krenim vas bolje. Ja vas stavil, što vi prijehali i posjetili moju zemlju. I want to see you in Anglia. I don't know how to thank you for everything. It's been a real pleasure to meet you. I'm afraid we live rather simply in reduced circumstances. I'm so sorry. I, I can't ask you to come and see us again. Oh, I consider myself fortunate indeed to have been received once at your house. I'm sorry. I must seem so surly and ungrateful. You could never seem anything most gracious and charming. Perks! Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, please, 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 no, no, no. The, the wife can get very jealous. It can actually turn quite ugly, you know. <laughs> Walk on. Bye. Bye. I wonder if Daddy will be that excited when he comes home to us. You look tired, Mummy. Lean on me. No, it's my place to give Mother my arm. Now Father's not here, I'm the head of the family. Happy 
birthday, darling. Thank you. <laughs> this is my present. It's pencils again. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. This is my present. Oh, Peter. Not your own dear engine that you're so fond of. That is so kind and generous. No. Not the engine. Just the sweets. Uh, of course, that's what I thought you meant. I'll go halves on the engine if you like. Peter, thank you. It's a splendid present. But it's broken. Start running on Excuse time, me. or you stop dropping luggage. You've got it all wrong. Get that kettle out of here. friends and relations. Well, if you put me down next time you stop and let me the fare for a third class ticket, I'll pay you back. I'm not a confidence trickster, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Nick, ain't you got a pal who can use a soldering iron? Yeah, I have. That's what Father said it needed. and second cousin's wife's brother. Very good chap, very good chap indeed. <laughs> oh, it's like having my birthday all over again. Thank you, Bobby. When's your birthday, Mr Perks? Uh, the 15th of this month, if you really want to know. But I gave up keeping birthdays years ago, before you were born. Why? Well, I'm too busy. Looking after, looking after the missus and the bairns. His wife and children. I know. Perky! Pete! Phil! Porridge! Good news. I sold another story. You know something? I'm getting good at this. <laughs> buns for tea. Mother, would you mind if we didn't have our buns for tea tonight, but on the 15th next Thursday? No, of course not, but why? It's Mr Perks' birthday. He's been really friendly to us, and we wanted to give him our buns. Certainly. Come on, we must think. We could just give him the buns. It's not no. enough. I know. Perks is so nice to everybody. There must be lots of people in the village who'd like to help give him a good birthday. Let's go round and ask everybody. Mother said we weren't to ask people for things. For ourselves, she meant. Not for other people. We should ask her first. What's the point in bothering Mother for everything? Given. Pram, Mrs. Ransom. Half a pound of tea from the grocer. Woolen scarf, slightly faded, from the drapers. Stuffed squirrel from the doctor. 
promised a piece of honeycomb and six bootlaces from the cobbler, an iron shovel from the blacksmith. Anything else? A slab of meat from the butcher. Ah, oh, yes. You can pick that up on the way. Oops. <laughs> I've done an extra clean-up, it being, it being Pokes' birthday. We knew it was his birthday, so we brought him some presents. What's the matter? Don't you like them? Like them? Of course I do. You're so kind. Pokes has never had a birthday like it. Not even when he was a boy. I mean, look at it, Arthur. It, it, well, it's fit for a prince. Not that he's a prince. <laughs> oh, bless us, he's early. Let's hide in the washroom. You tell him about it. Yes. And then we'll all come in and shout many happy returns. Hello. Oh, here's our pretty spread. It's your birthday tea, Bert. Where's the children? I couldn't say. Oh, then. Give us a big sloppy one. <laughs> 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 What's that brand in there and all these things? Well, oh, no. I hope he doesn't think it's all come from us and that we're trying to be grand. I, I don't care who it's from. I'm not going to start these charity goings on at my time of life. Oh, hush, please. For goodness sake, they're in the washroom. They can hear everything you're saying. Well, I'll give them something to listen to. Come out! Come out! Come out here and tell me what, what you mean by this. Have I ever complained about being short enough as to need charity? We thought you'd be pleased. I'll never be kind to anyone as long as I live. We didn't mean any harm. It's not what you mean, young man. It's what you do. Oh, don't. We thought you'd love it. We always have things on our birthdays. From your relatives? That's different. And look at it all. Look at it. There's far too much. It's not all from us. We forgot to put the labels on. It's from all sorts of people in the village. But please. Have you been going around telling the neighbours we can't make ends meet? Well, you can take back this whole bag of tricks to where it came from. And I would rather not be acquainted with you any longer. It's all the same to you. Look, we'll go if you like. And you needn't be friends with us anymore if you don't want to. We'll always be friends with you, however nasty you are to us. Shh. But before we go, let us show you the labels we meant to put on the things. You want to see any labels? See enough labels at work and luggage. We wrote down what everyone said when they gave us the things. Don't you upset yourself. I know you meant it kindly, even if he doesn't. Mother's label first. It says, little clothes for Mrs. Perks's children. I can't do much because we're poor ourselves, but I'd like to do something because he's so friendly to you. Well, that's different. Your mother's a born lady. Well, keep the frocks and whatnot, Nell. The pram's from Mrs. Ransom. It was bought for my daughter's first, but sadly he died and she never had another. It would be a help for Mrs. Perks's little girl. I'm not sending the pram back, Bert, so don't ask me. I'm not asking you anything. Mr. James made the shovel for you himself. 
You tell Mr. Perks it's a pleasure to make something for a man who's so much respected. I thought you'd love to know how fond people are of you. I've never been so unhappy in my life. Goodbye. All right. All right. I take it all back. Everything I say that you don't like. Nell, put the kettle on. Arthur, stop picking your nose. I knew you'd like them once you really understood. I'm, I'm not unhappy about the presents. I mean, well, they're an A1 collection. I'm, I'm just... I'm just pleased from the kind respect of our neighbours. You are the most aggravating man. A man must respect himself, otherwise no one else will do it for him. So, stay to tea. Bobby, dear. Parting from father was terrible. Much worse than anything you can think of. But it'd be much more terrible if you children were to forget him. You aren't, are you? No. Why? You never speak of him now. Well, I... I thought you were so unhappy about Daddy not being here. It made it worse when you talked about him. So I stopped. We all did. I promised myself I'd never ask you questions, and I never have, have I? But the trouble, it... It won't last forever, will it? No. this? A pretty young girl on a swing. I've, uh, I've brought you some magazines by way of a thank you for my birthday presents. Don't read them all at once now, they rot your brain. Thank you very much, Mr Perks. Oh, I don't thank me. People leave them on the trains. I wish they'd leave something a bit more useful, like cakes. Eh? Oh, well, would you like a cup of tea, Mr Perks? Uh, no, 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 I'd best not. <laughs> no offence, but I hear your house is a wee bit of a rat problem. Goodbye. Goodbye. did it. Never. Oh, Bobby, you don't believe it. You don't believe Daddy, did it? Of course not, Mother! They've shut him up in prison, but he's done nothing wrong. He's good and honourable. And we must be proud of him and wait. Why didn't you tell me? Oh, you 
going to tell the others? No. Well. It's so wrong. How can this happen? Don't be angry with me, my love. But you didn't do anything. You just brought us down here. We should have stood outside Buckingham Palace in the rain and the cold until they let him out. <laughs> about it. I want to understand. I'll tell you, my love. But then we won't speak of it anymore. We must bear it and be brave. My dear friend, you see what is in this paper. It is not true. Father is not a spy or a traitor. Mother says the man under him was jealous and put the stolen papers in father's desk. Nobody listens to a word Mother says, but you were good and clever and you quickly found out about the Russian gentleman's wife. Can't you find out about who did the treason because father is a true Englishman and incapable of doing such things. It is dreadful. Mother is getting so thin. Please help me. There is just mother and me who know, and we can't do anything. With love, your affectionate friend, Berta. I like watching people work. No, Phyllis. Look! Oh, yes, it's the boys from Maybridge School doing a paper chase. Oh, that's really exciting. What's the paper chase? That first boy, he's called the hare and he has to leave a trail of paper for the house to follow. Go on, you hound! <laughs> Let's cut across the top and we can watch them coming out the other end. Or won't they beat us? No, we'll be running on grass. They'll be running in the dark. You've never seen a train from up here before. No, look out! Here he comes! There. No! They are the last! There's the one in red jersey to come yet! I've got a pain in my front from being so hungry. Come on. One of the red jersey must have been mixing with the others. No, I don't think so. Let's go down. Sandwich. I think the 
the boy in the red jersey's had an accident. As we speak, he's probably lying with his head on the metals, an unresisting prey to any person... Oh, stop talking like a book. Come on, Phil, keep close behind me. If a train comes, stand flat against a tunnel wall and hold your petticoats to you. I will if you give me a sandwich! I'm going first. It was my idea. I want to go back. A train! Stand back! Quick! In here! I don't think so. He's big. Hello? Come on. Wake up. Speak to us. Wake up. I think he's dead. Stop that. I knew he was not. Uh, I'm all right. I, I believe I've broken my leg. I, I tripped him on those silly wires. Who are you? Your rescue party. Do you think you could move if we helped you? I could try. Come on. Oh. 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 Look, I'll stay with him. You go and get help. Go on! Quickly! What's your name? Jim. Mine's Bobby. Weren't there more of you just now? Yes, Peter and Phil, my brother and sister. They've gone to get someone to carry you out. <laughs> Funny names. Old boys. Yes. <laughs> Mine's Roberta, really. I wish I was a boy. I think you're all right as you are. Sister still mending that old dress over and over. Ah! Look. Where do you live? I go to boarding school in Maybridge. I suppose I've got to get back there somehow. Well, you could bring him to our house. I'll go ahead and tell Mother. 
Hey, what will your ma say about you bringing home a sick stranger? That'll be fine. They've done it before with a Russian. But it wasn't needed. I had my doubts about your father's case when I first read about it in the papers at the time. And ever since I've known who you were, I've been trying to find out things. All I can tell you is, I have hopes, my dear. I have hopes. <laughs> but I, I think we should hang on to our secret a little longer. It wouldn't do to upset your mother about a false hope, would it? You don't think father did it, do you? Say so you don't. I'm perfectly certain he didn't. Excuse me. H have you packed your um things? My things. Yes, they're, they're all packed. If you leave anything, we we could probably send it on in a parcel. Yes. So um. Goodbye. Goodbye. 
That's my dress. Lovely. That's right. Yes, let's. <laughs> misses us. We never go to see it now. We've had Jim to play with. What I don't like is our not waving at the 9.15 and sending our love to Father by it. All right, let's start doing this again. Don't you feel well, my sweetheart? I don't know. Mother, would you mind if I walk down to the station? Oh. No, of course not. Good morning to you, miss, and many of them. God bless you, dear. I don't think I've ever been so glad of anything. One thing I must do in a day like today, no offence. You're not offended, are you? I haven't taken too great a liberty. Oh, no, of course not, dear Mr. Parks. But on a day like what?
Madani. Madani! And they caught him. Yes, they did. And everyone now knows that it wasn't your daddy. I always knew. I thought you did. Why don't you go in and tell Mother quietly that everything's all right? <laughs> 